Tomato, an overview. The tomato is the edible berry of the plant Solanum lycopusicum, commonly known as the tomato plant. The species originated in Western South America, Mexico, and Central America. The Mexican Nahuatl word tomato gave rise to the Spanish word tomate, from which the English word tomato derived. Its domestication and use as a cultivated food may have originated with the indigenous peoples of Mexico. The Aztecs used tomatoes in their cooking at the time of the Spanish conquest of the Aztec Empire, and after the Spanish encountered the tomato for the first time after their contact with the Aztecs, they brought the plant to Europe in a widespread transfer of plants known as the Columbian Exchange. From there, the tomato was introduced to other parts of the European colonized world during the 16th century. Tomatoes are a significant source of umami flavor. They are consumed in diverse ways, raw or cooked, and in many dishes, sauces, salads, and drinks. While tomatoes are fruits botanically classified as berries, they are commonly used culinarily as a vegetable ingredient or side dish. Numerous varieties of the tomato plant are widely grown in temperate climates across the world, with greenhouses allowing for the production of tomatoes throughout all seasons of the year. Tomato plants typically grow to meters in height. They are vines that have a weak stem that sprawls and typically need support. Indeterminate tomato plants are perennials in their native habitat, but are cultivated as annuals. Determinate or bush plants are annuals that stop growing at a certain height and produce a crop all at once. The size of the tomato varies according to the cultivar, with a range of common in width. Etymology. The word tomato comes from the Spanish tomate, which in turn comes from the Nahuatl word tomate, the tomate pronunciation, meaning swelling fruit, also fat water or fat thing. The native Mexican tomatillo is tomate. When Aztecs started to cultivate the fruit to be larger, sweeter and red, they called the new variety tomato or jetomatus pronounced item, plump with navel or fat water with navel. The specific name Lycopus come from the 1753 book Species Plant Term is of Greek origin, Lycopus meaning of peach. Pronunciation The usual pronunciations of tomato are usual in American English and usual in British English. The words dual pronunciations were immortalized in Ira and George Gushen's 1937 song Let's Call the Whole Thing Off You Like and I Like You Like and I Like and have become a symbol for nitpicking pronunciation disputes. In this capacity, it has even become an American and British slang term, saying when presented with two choices can mean what's the difference, or it's all the same to me. Description Tomato plants are vines, initially decumbent, typically growing 180 to 60 or more above the ground if supported, although erect bush varieties have been bred, generally 100 to 33 in tall or shorter. Indeterminate types are tender perennials, dying annually in temperate climates they are originally native to tropical highlands, although they can live up to three years in a greenhouse in some cases. Terminate types are annual in all clemates tomato plants or dicots, and grow as a series of branching stems, with a terminal bud at the tip that does the actual growing. When the tip eventually stops growing, whether because of pruning or flowering, lateral buds take over and grow into other, fully functional, vines. Tomato vines are typically pubescent, meaning covered with fine short hairs. The hairs facilitate the vining process, turning into roots wherever the plant is in contact with the ground and moisture, especially if the vine's connection to its original root has been damaged or several most tomato plants have compound leaves and are called regular leaf or L plants, but some cultivars have simple leaves known as potato leaf PL style because of their resemblance to that particular relative. 
Of our L plants, there are variations, such as rugo's leaves, which are deeply grooved, and variegated and gore leaves, which have additional colours where a genetic mutation causes chlorophyll to be excluded from some portions of the leaves. Leaves are come in long, odd pinnate, with five to nine leaflets on petioles, each leaflet up to eight and three in long, with a serrated margin. Both the stem and leaves are densely glandular hairy their flowers, appearing on the apical meristem, have the anthers fused along the edges, forming a column surrounding the pistil style. Flowers in domestic cultivars can be self-fertilizing. The flowers are coming across, yellow, with five pointed lobes on the corolla. They are born in a cyme of 3 to 12 together although in culinary terms. Tomato is regarded as a vegetable, its fruit is classified botanically as a berry. As a true fruit, it develops from the ovary of the plant after fertilization, its flesh comprising the pericarp walls. The fruit contains hollow spaces full of seeds and moisture, called liquid cavities. These vary among cultivated species according to type. Some smaller varieties have two cavities. Globe-shaped varieties typically have three to five. Beefsteak tomatoes have a great number of smaller cavities. Wild paste tomatoes have very few, very small cavities for propagation. The seeds need to come from a mature fruit and be dried or fermented before germination. Classification in 1753, Linus placed the tomato in the genus Solanum alongside the potato Solanum lycopusicum. In 1768, Philip Miller moved it to its own genus, naming it Lycopusicum esculentum. The name came into wide use, but was technically in breach of the plant naming rules because Linus's species name Lycopusicum still had priority. Although the name Lycopusicum Lycopusicum was suggested by Carsten in 1888, it is not used because it violates the International Code of Nomenclature barring the use of tautonyms in botanical nomenclature. The corrected name Lycopusicum Lycopusicum Nicholson 1974 was technically valid because Miller's genus name and Linus's species name differ in exact spelling. But since Lycopusicum esculentum has become so well known, it was officially listed as a nomen conservandum in 1983, and would be the correct name for the tomato in classifications which do not place the tomato in the genus Solanum. Genetic evidence has now shown that Linus was correct to put the tomato in the genus Solanum, making Solanum Lycopusicum the correct name. Both names, however, will probably be found in the literature for some time. Two of the major reasons for considering the genera separate are the leaf structure tomato leaves are markedly different from any other solanum, and the biochemistry many of the alkaloids common to other solanum species are conspicuously absent in the tomato. On the other hand, hybrids of tomato and deployed potato can be created in the lab by somatic fusion, and are partially fertile, providing evidence of the close relationship between these species. Genome. An international consortium of researchers from 10 countries began sequencing the tomato genome in 2004. A pre-release version of the genome was made available in December 2009. The complete genome for the cult of a 1706 was published on 31 May 2012 in Nature. The latest reference genome published in 2021 had 799 MB and encoded 34,384 predicted proteins spread over 12 chromosomes. Genetic modification. Since many other fruits, like strawberries, apples, melons, and bananas share the same characteristics and genes, researchers stated the published genome could help to improve food quality. 
food security and reduce cost of all of these fruits the first commercially available genetically modified food was a tomato called fluff saver which was engineered to have a longer shelf life however it is no longer commercially available scientists are continuing to develop tomatoes with new traits not found in natural crops such as increased resistance to pests or environmental stresses or better flavor breeding the tomato genetic resource center germ plasm resources information network avrdc and numerous seed banks around the world store seed representing genetic variations of value to modern agriculture. These seed stocks are available for legitimate breeding and research efforts. While individual breeding efforts can produce useful results, the bulk of tomato breeding work is at universities and major agriculture-related corporations. These efforts have resulted in significant regionally adapted breeding lines and hybrids, such as the Mountain Series from North Carolina. Corporations including Heinz, Monsanto, and Seed, and Bejo Seed have breeding programs that attempt to improve production, size, shape, color, flavor, disease tolerance, pest tolerance, nutritional value, and numerous other traits. Fruit versus vegetable. Botanically, a tomato is a fruitabari, consisting of the ovary, together with the seeds, of a flowering plant. However, the tomato is considered a culinary vegetable because it has a much lower sugar content than culinary fruits, because it is more savory, humamy than sweet. It is typically served as part of a salad or main course of a meal, rather than as a dessert. Tomatoes are not the only food source with this ambiguity. Bell peppers, cucumbers, green beans, eggplants, avocados, and squashes of all kinds such as courgette, zucchini, and pumpkins are all botanically fruit, yet cooked as vegetables. Confusion on whether tomatoes are fruits or vegetables has led to legal dispute in the United States. In 1887, U.S. tariff laws that imposed a duty on vegetables, but not on fruit, caused the tomato status to become a matter of legal importance. In Nix v. Hedden, the U.S. Supreme Court settled the tariff controversy on May 10, 1893, by declaring that the tomato is a vegetable, based on the popular definition that classifies vegetables by use they are generally served with dinner and not dessert. The holding of this case applies only to the interpretation of the Tariff of 1883, and the court did not purport to reclassify the tomato for botanical or other purposes. History The wild ancestor of the tomato, Solanum pimpinella folium, is native to Western South America. These wild versions were the size of peas. The first evidence of domestication points to the Aztecs and other peoples in Mesoamerica, who used the fruit fresh and in their cooking. The Spanish first introduced tomatoes to Europe, where they became used in Spanish food. In France, Italy and Northern Europe, the tomato was initially grown as an ornamental plant. It was regarded with suspicion as a food because botanists recognized it as a nightshade, a relative of the poisonous belladonna. This was exacerbated by the interaction of the tomato's acidic juice with pewter plates. The leaves and fruit contain tomatin, which in large quantities would be toxic. However, the ripe fruit contains a much lower amount of tomatin than their mature fruit. Mesomerica. The exact date of domestication is unknown. By 500 BC, it was already being cultivated in southern Mexico and probably other areas. 
13. The Pueblo people are thought to have believed that those who witnessed the ingestion of tomato seeds were blessed with powers of divination. The large, lumpy variety of tomato, a mutation from a smoother, smaller fruit, originated in the Somerca and may be the direct ancestor of some modern cultivated tomatoes. 15. The Aztecs raised several varieties of tomato, with red tomatoes called Zitamil and green tomatoes called Tamil Tomatillo. Bernardino de Sagan reported seeing a great variety of tomatoes in the Aztec market at Tenoch to in Mexico City. <laughs> Large tomatoes, small tomatoes, leaf tomatoes, sweet tomatoes, large serpent tomatoes, nipple-shaped tomatoes, and tomatoes of all colors from the brightest red to the deepest yellow. Bernardino de Sagan mentioned Aztecs cooking various sauces, some with and without tomatoes of different sizes, serving them in city markets, food sauces, hot sauces, fried food, all the cooked food, juices, sauces of juices, shredded food with chili, with squash seeds most likely cucumber to people, with tomatoes, with smoked chili, with hot chili, with yellow chili, with mild red chili sauce, yellow chili sauce, hot chili sauce, with bird excrement sauce, sauce of smoked chili, heated sauces, bean sauce, he sells toasted beans, cooked beans, mushroom sauce, sauce of small squash, sauce of large tomatoes, sauce of ordinary tomatoes, sauce of various kinds of sour herbs, avocado sauce, Spanish distribution. Spanish conquista de Hernan Cortes may have been the first to transfer a small yellow tomato to Europe after he captured the Aztec city of Tenochtitlan, now Mexico City, in 1521. The earliest discussion of the tomato in European literature appeared in a herbal written in 1544 by Pietro Andrea Mattioli, an Italian physician and botanist who suggested that a new type of eggplant had been brought to Italy that was blood red or golden colour when mature and could be divided into segments and eaten like an eggplant that is cooked and seasoned with salt, black pepper, and oil. It was not until ten years later that tomatoes were named in print by Mattioli as pomidoro, or golden apples. Thirteen after the Spanish colonization of the Americas, the Spanish distributed the tomato throughout the colonies in the Caribbean. They also took it to the Philippines, from where it spread to Southeast Asia and then the entire Asian continent. The Spanish also brought the tomato to Europe. It grew easily in Mediterranean climates, and cultivation began in the Earth. It was probably eaten shortly after it was introduced and was certainly being used as food by the early 17th century in Spain. China The tomato was introduced to China, likely via the Philippines or Macau, in the Earth. It was given the name Fonch Barbarian Eggplant, as the Chinese named many foods thus introduced from abroad, but referring specifically to early introductions. Chile. The recorded history of tomatoes in Italy dates back to at least 31 October 1548, when the house steward of Corsimo de Medici, the Grand Duke of Tuscany, wrote to the Medici private secretary informing him that the basket of tomatoes sent from the Grand Duke's Florentine estate at Tor del Calo had arrived safely. Tomatoes were grown mainly as ornamentals early on after their arrival in Italy. For example, the Florentine aristocrat Giovanni Vetrio Sodrini wrote how they were to be sought only for their beauty, and were grown only in gardens or flower beds. The tomato's ability to mutate and create new and different varieties helped contribute to its success and spread throughout Italy. However, even in areas where the climate supported growing tomatoes, the habit of growing to the ground suggested low status. 
They were not adopted as a staple of the peasant population because they were not as filling as other fruits already available. Additionally, both toxic and inedible varieties discouraged many people from attempting to consume or prepare any other varieties. In certain areas of Italy, such as Florence, the fruit was used solely as a tabletop decoration until it was incorporated into the local cuisine in the late 17th or early 18th century. The earliest discovered cookbook with tomato recipes was published in Naples in 1692, though the author had apparently obtained these recipes from Spanish sources. Seventeen unique varieties were developed over the next several hundred years for uses such as dried tomatoes, sauce tomatoes, pizza tomatoes, and tomatoes for long-term storage. These varieties are usually known for their place of origin as much as by a variety name. For example, Pomodorino del Pinolo del Vesuvio is the hanging tomato of Vesuvius, or the well-known and highly priced San Marzano plum tomato grown in that region. Britain Tomatoes were not grown in England until the Earth. One of the earliest cultivators was John Gerard, a barber surgeon. Gerard's herbal, published in 1597 and largely plagiarized from continental sources, is also one of the earliest discussions of the tomato in England. Gerard knew the tomato was eaten in Spain and Italy. Nonetheless, he believed it was poisonous in fact. The plant and raw fruit do have low levels of tomatin, but are not generally dangerous, see below. Grad's views were influential, and the tomato was considered unfit for eating though not necessarily poisonous for many years in Britain and its North American colonies. Seventeen, however, by the mid-18th century, tomatoes were widely eaten in Britain, and before the end of that century, the Encyclopedia Britannica stated the tomato was in daily use in soups, broths, and as a garnish. They were not part of the average person's diet, and though by 1820 they were described as to be seen in great abundance in all our vegetable markets and to be used by all our best cooks, reference was made to the cultivation in gardens still for the singularity of their appearance while their use in cooking was associated with exotic Italian or Jewish cuisine. India The tomato arrived in India by the way of Portuguese explorers in the 16th century. It was grown from the 18th century onwards for the British. Even today, in Bengal, the alternative name is Billiti Begun Bengali, meaning foreign eggplant. It was then adopted widely as it is well suited to India's climate, with Uttarakhand as one of the main producers. Middle East and North Africa The tomato was introduced to cultivation in the Middle East by John Barker, British Consul in Aleppo circa 1799-1825. 19th century descriptions of its consumption are uniformly as an ingredient in a cooked dish. In 1881, it is described as only eaten in the region within the last 40 years. Today, the tomato is a critical and ubiquitous part of Middle Eastern cuisine, served fresh in salads e.g. Arab salad, Israeli salad, Shirazi salad and Turkish salad, grilled with kebabs and other dishes, made into sauces, and so on. United States The earliest reference to tomatoes being grown in British North America is from 1710, when herbalist William Salmon reported seeing them in what is today South Carolina. 25 they may have been introduced from the Caribbean. By the mid-18th century, they were cultivated on some Carolina plantations, and probably in other parts of the southeast as well. Possibly, 
some people continued to think tomatoes were poisonous at this time, and in general, they were growing more as ornamental plants than as food. Thomas Jefferson, who ate tomatoes in Paris, sent some seeds back to America. 28 Some early American advocates of the culinary use of the tomato included Michel Felice Korn and Robert Gibbon Johnson. Early tomato breeders included Henry Tilden in Iowa and a Dr. Han in Baltimore. Alexander W. Livingston receives much credit for developing numerous varieties of tomato for both home and commercial gardeners. The U.S. Department of Agriculture's 1937 yearbook declared that half of the major varieties were a result of the abilities of the Livingstons to evaluate and perpetuate superior material in the tomato. Livingston's first breed of tomato, the Paragon, was introduced in 1870, the beginning of a great tomato culture enterprise in the county. In 1875, he introduced Acme, which was said to be involved in the parentage of most of the tomatoes introduced by him and his competitors for the next 25 years when Livingston began his attempts to develop the tomato as a commercial crop. His aim had been to grow tomatoes smooth in contour, uniform in size, and sweet in flavour. He eventually developed over 17 different varieties of the tomato plant. Today, the crop is grown in every state in the Union because of the long growing season needed for this heat loving crop. Several states in the US Sun Belt became major tomato producers, particularly Florida and California. In California, tomatoes are grown under irrigation for both the fresh fruit market and for canning and processing. The University of California, Davis, UC Davis became a major center for research on the tomato. The C.M. Rick Tomato Genetics Resource Center at UC Davis is a gene bank of wild relatives, monogenic mutants and miscellaneous genetic stocks of tomato. The center is named for the late Dr. Charles M. Rick, a pioneer in tomato genetics research. Research on processing tomatoes is also conducted by the California Tomato Research Institute in Esquilin. California and California growers have used a method of cultivation called dry farming, especially with early gull tomatoes. This technique encourages the plants and roots deep to find existing moisture in soil that retains moisture, such as clay soil. Modern commercial varieties. The poor taste and lack of sugar in modern garden and commercial tomato varieties resulted from breeding tomatoes to ripen uniformly red. This change occurred after discovery of a mutant euphenotype in the mid 20th century that ripened uniformly. This was widely crossbred to produce red fruit without the typical green ring around the stem on uncrisp bread varieties. Prior to general introduction of this trait, most tomatoes produced more sugar during ripening and were sweeter and more flavorful evidence has been found that percent of the total carbon fixed in the fruit can be produced by photosynthesis in the developing fruit of the normal euphenotype. The huge genetic mutation in code is a factor that produces defective chloroplasts with lower density in developing fruit, resulting in a lighter green color of unripe fruit and repression of sugar's accumulation in the resulting ripe fruit by percent. Perhaps more important than their role in photosynthesis, the fruit chloroplasts are remodeled during ripening into chlorophyll free chromoplasts that synthesize and accumulate the carotenoids lycopene, carotene, and other metabolites that are sensory and nutritional assets of the ripe fruit. The potent chloroplasts in the dark green shoulders of the euphenotype are beneficial here, but have the disadvantage of leaving green shoulders near the stems of the ripe fruit, and even cracked yellow shoulders, apparently because of oxidative stress due to overload of the photosynthetic chain in direct sunlight at high temperatures. Hence genetic design of a commercial variety that combines the advantages of types U and U requires fine tuning but may be feasible furthermore breeders of modern tomato cultivars typically strive to produce tomato plants exhibiting improved yield shelf life size 
and tolerant seresistance to various environmental pressures, including disease. However, these breeding efforts have yielded unintended negative consequences on various tomato fruit attributes. For instance, linkage drag is a phenomenon that has been responsible for alterations in the metabolism of the tomato fruit. Linkage drag describes the introduction of an undesired trait or allele into a plant during backcrossing. This trital is physically linked or is very close to the desired allele along the chromosome. In introducing the beneficial allele, there exists a high likelihood that the poor allele is also incorporated into the plant. Thus, breeding efforts attempting to enhance certain traits for example, larger fruit size have unintentionally altered production of chemicals associated with, for instance, nutritional value and flavor breeders have turned to using wild tomato species as a source of alleles for the introduction of beneficial traits into modern tomato varieties. For example, wild tomato relatives may possess higher amounts of fruit solids which are associated with greater sugar content or resistance to diseases caused by microbes, such as resistance towards the early blight pathogen Alphtenoria solani. However, this tactic has limitations, for the incorporation of certain traits, such as pathogen resistance, can negatively impact other favorable phenotypes, such as fruit production. Cultivation The tomato is grown worldwide for its edible fruits, with thousands of cultivars. A fertilizer with an NPK ratio of is often sold as tomato fertilizer or vegetable fertilizer, although manure and compost are also used. On average there are 150,000 seeds in a pound of tomato seeds. Diseases Tomato cultivars vary widely in their resistance to disease. Modern hybrids focus on improving disease resistance over the heirloom plants. Various forms of mildew and blight are common tomato afflictions, which is why tomato cultivars are often marked with a combination of letters that refer to specific disease resistance. The most common letters are LB late blight, P. verticillium wilt, F. fusarium wilt strain I, F. F. fusarium wilt strain I and 2, N. nematodes, T. tobacco mosaic virus, and the alternaria. A common tomato disease is tobacco mosaic virus. Handling cigarettes and other infected tobacco products can transmit the virus to tomato plants. Another particularly dreaded disease is curly top, carried by the beetle falper which interrupts the life cycle. As the name implies, it has the symptom of making the top leaves of the plant wrinkle up and grow abnormally bacterial wilt is another common disease impacting yield. Wen et al. 2019 find phage combination therapies reduce that impact, sometimes by reducing bacterial abundance and sometimes by selecting for resistant but slow-growing genetics. Pests. Some common tomato pests are the tomato bug, stink bugs, cutworms, tomato hornworms and tobacco hornworms, aphids, cabbage loopers, white fleas, tomato fruitworms, flea beetles, red spider mite, slugs, and Colorado potato beetles. The tomato russet mite, Aculops lycoprosicae feeds on foliage and yum fruit of tomato plants, causing shriveling and necrosis of leaves, flowers, and fruit, possibly killing the plant if an insect attack tomato plants produce systemin, a plant peptide hormone. Systemin activates defensive mechanisms, such as the production of protease inhibitors to slow the growth of insects. The hormone was first identified in tomatoes, but similar proteins have been identified in other species since.
other disorders. Although not a disease as such, irregular supplies of water can cause growing or ripening fruit to split. Besides cosmetic damage, the splits may allow decay to stop, although growing fruits have some ability to heal after a split. In addition, a deformity called cap facing can be caused by pests, temperature stress, or poor soil conditions. Affected fruit usually remains edible, but its appearance may be unsightly. Companion plants Tomato serve, or are served by, a large variety of companion plants. Among the most famous pairings is the tomato plant and carrots. Studies supporting this relationship have produced a popular book about companion planting. Carrots love tomatoes devastating tomato hornworm has a major predator in various parasitic wasps, whose larvae devour the hornworm, but whose adult form drinks nectar from tiny flowered plants like umbellifers. Several species of umbellifer are therefore often grown with tomato plants, including parsley, queen and slice and occasionally dull. These also attract predatory flies that attack various tomato pestiborage is thought to repel the tomato hornworm moth of plants with strong scents like alliums, onions, chives, colic, mince basil, oregano, spearmint and French marigold, tadis patula are thought to mask the scent of the tomato plant, making it harder for pests to locate it or to provide an alternative landing point, reducing the odds of the pests from attacking the correct plant. These plants may also subtly affect the flavor of tomato fruit. Basil is popularly recommended as a companion plant to the tomato. Common claims are that basil may deter pests or improve tomato flavor. However, in double-blind taste tests, Basil did not significantly affect the taste of tomatoes when planted adjacent to them. Tomato plants can protect asparagus from asparagus beetles because they contain solanin that kills this pest, while asparagus plants contain asparagusic acid that repels nematodes known to attack tomato plants. Marigolds also repel nematodes. Pollination. In the wild, original state, tomatoes required cross-pollination, they were much more self-incompatible than domestic cultivars. As a floral device to reduce selfing, the pistil of wild tomatoes extends farther out of the flower than today's cultivars. The stamens were, and remain, entirely within a closed corolla. As tomatoes were moved from their native areas, the traditional pollinators, probably a species of halictobi, did not move with them. The trait of cell fertility became an advantage, and domestic cultivars of tomato have been selected to maximize this trait. This is not the same as self-pollination, despite the common claim that tomatoes do so. That tomatoes pollinate themselves poorly without outside aid is clearly shown in greenhouse situations, where pollination must be aided by artificial wind. Vibration of the plant's one brand of vibrator is a wand called an electric bee that is used manually, or more often today, by cultured bumblebees. The anther of a tomato flower is shaped like a hollow tube, with a pollen produced within the structure, rather than on the surface, as in most species. The pollen moves through pores in anther, but very little pollen is shed without some kind of externally induced motion. The ideal vibratory frequencies to release pollen grains are provided by an insect, such as a bumblebee, or the original wild halictid pollinator, capable of engaging in a behavior known as buzz pollination, which honeybees cannot perform. In an outdoor setting, when or animals usually provide sufficient motion to produce commercially viable crops. Fruit formation. Pollination and fruit formation depend on meiosis. Meiosis is central to the processes by which diploid microspore mother cells within anther give rise to haploid pollen grains 
and may gasp or mother cells in ovules that are contained within the ovary give rise to haploid nuclei. Union of haploid nuclei from pollen and ovule fertilization can occur either by self or cross-pollination. Fertilization leads to the formation of a diploid zygote that can then develop into an embryo within the emerging seed. Repeated fertilizations within the ovary are accompanied by maturation of the ovary to form the tomato fruit. Homologues of the Rika gene, including RAD, play a key role in homologous recombination or repair of DNA during meiosis. A red homolog is present in the of tomato Lycopus canisculantum, suggesting that recombinational repair occurs during meiosis in tomato. Hydroponic and greenhouse cultivation. Tomatoes are often grown in greenhouses in cooler climates, and cultivars such as the British Moneymaker and a number of cultivars grown in Siberia are specifically bred for indoor growing. In more temperate climates, it is not uncommon to start seeds in greenhouses during the late winter for future transplant. Greenhouse tomato production in large acreage, commercial greenhouses and owner-operator standalone or multiple big greenhouses is on the increase, providing fruit during those times of the year when field-grown fruit is not readily available. Smaller sized fruit cherry and grape, or clustered tomatoes fruit on the vine are the fruit of choice for the large commercial greenhouse operators while the beefsteak varieties are the choice of owner operator Grouch hydroponic technique is often used in hostile growing environments, as well as high density plantings. Picking and ripening to facilitate transportation and storage, tomatoes are often picked and root green and ripened in storage with the linear machine harvestable variety of tomato. The square tomato was developed in the earth by University of California, Davis's Cordy C. Hanna, which, in combination with the development of a suitable harvester, revolutionized the tomato growing industry. This type of tomato is grown commercially near plants that process and can tomatoes, tomato sauce, and tomato paste. They are harvested when ripe and are flavorful when picked. They are harvested 24 hours a day, 7 days a week during a 12 to 14 week season, and immediately transported to packing plants, which operate on the same schedule. California is a center of the sort of commercial tomato production and produces about a third of the processed tomatoes produced in the world in 1994. Calgene introduced a genetically modified tomato called the Flavsover, which could be vine ripened without compromising shelf life. However, the product was not commercially successful and was sold only until 1997. Yield. The world dedicated 4.8 million hectares in 2012 for tomato cultivation and the total production was about 161.8 million tonnes. The average world farm yield for tomato was 33.6 tonnes per hectare, in Ertemato farms in the Netherlands were the most productive in 2012, with a nationwide average of 476 tonnes per hectare followed by Belgium 463 tonnes per hectare and Iceland 429 tonnes per hectare. Records As of 2008, the heaviest tomato harvested, weighed 3.517 pound 12 oz, was of the cult of delicious, and was grown by Gordon Graham of Edmond, Oklahoma in 1986. The largest tomato plant grown was of the cultivar Sun Gold and reached 19.8 and 65 in length, grown by Naturculture Limited UK of Modestly, Lancashire, UK, in a massive tomato tree growing inside the Walt Disney World Resort's experimental greenhouses in Lake Buena Vista, Florida may have been the largest single tomato plant in the world. 
The plant has been recognised as a Guinness World Record holder with a harvest of more than 32,000 tomatoes and a total weight of 520 to 1,151 pound. It yielded thousands of tomatoes at one time from a single vine. Yong Huang, Etkut's manager of agricultural science, discovered the unique plant in Beijing, China. Huang brought a seeds to Epcot and created this specialized greenhouse for the fruit to grow. The vine grew golf ball-sized tomatoes, which were served at Walt Disney World restaurants. The tree developed a disease and was removed in April 2010 after about 13 months of life. Production In 2020, world production of tomatoes was 187 million tons with China accounting for 35% of the total, followed by India, Turkey, and the United States as major producers table. Consumption Though it is botanically a berry, a subset of fruit, the tomato is a vegetable for culinary purposes because of its savoury flower see above. Although tomatoes originated in the Americas, they have become extensively used in Mediterranean cuisine. Ripe tomatoes contain significant umami flavour and they are a key ingredient in pizza and are commonly used in pasta sauces. They are also used in gazpacho Spanish cuisine and Poampton Quet Catalan cuisine. The tomato is now grown and eaten around the world. It is used in diverse ways, including raw in salads or in slices, stewed, incorporated into a wide variety of dishes, or processed into ketchup or tomato soup. Unnoop green tomatoes can also be breaded and fried, used to make salsa, or pickled. Tomato juice is sold as a drink, and is used in cocktails such as the Bloody Mary. Storage Tomatoes keep best unwashed at room temperature and out of direct sunlight. It is not recommended to refrigerate them as this can harm the flavour. Tomatoes stored cold tend to lose their flavour permanently as storing stem down can prolong shelf life, as it may keep from rotting too quickly. Tomatoes that are not yet ripe can be kept in a paper bag till ripening. Tomatoes are easy to preserve whole in pieces, as tomato sauce or paste by home canning. They are acidic enough to process in a water bath rather than a pressure cooker as most vegetables require. The fruit is also preserved by drying, often in the sun, and sold either in bags or in jars with oil. Plant toxicity. The leaves, stem, and green on root fruit of the tomato plant contain small amounts of the alkaloid tomatin, whose effect on humans has not been studied. They also contain small amounts of solanin, a toxic alkaloid found in potato leaves and other plants in the nightshade family. However, solanin concentrations in foliage and green fruit are generally too small to be dangerous unless large amounts are considered for example, as creams. Small amounts of tomato foliage are sometimes used for flavouring without ill effect, and the green fruit of one root red tomato varieties is sometimes used for cooking, particularly as fried green tomatoes. There are also tomato varieties with fully ripe fruit that is still green. Compared to potatoes, the amount of solanin in unripe green or fully ripe tomatoes is low. However, even in the case of potatoes, while solanin poisoning resulting from dosages several times the normal human consumption has been demonstrated, actual cases of poisoning from excessive consumption of potatoes or rari tomato plants can be toxic to dogs if they eat large amounts of the fruit or chew plant material. Salmonella 
Tomatoes were linked to seven salmonella outbreaks between 1990 and 2005, and may have been the cause of a salmonella outbreak causing 172 illnesses in 18 U.S. states in 2006. The 2008 United States Salmonella outbreak caused the temporary removal of tomatoes from stores and restaurants across the United States and parts of Canada, although other foods, including jalapeno and serrano peppers, may have been involved. Nutrition a tomato is 95% water, contains 4% carbohydrates and less than 1% each of fat and protein table. 100 g of raw tomatoes apply 18 kilocalories and are a moderate source of vitamin C 17% of the daily value, but otherwise have no significant nutrient content table. Research. There is no conclusive evidence to indicate that the lycopene in tomatoes or in supplements affects the onset of cardiovascular diseases or cancer in the United States. Supposed health benefits of consuming tomatoes, tomato products, or lycopene to affect cancer cannot be mentioned on packaged food products without a qualified health claim statement. In a scientific review of potential claims for lycopene favorably affecting DNA, skin exposed to ultraviolet radiation, heart function and vision, the European Food Safety Authority concluded that evidence for lycopene having any of these effects was inconclusive. Host plant the potato Tubromothorium opiculella is an oligophagous insect that prefers to feed on plants of the family Solanaceae such as tomato plants. Female P. opiculella use the leaves to lay their eggs and the hatched larvae will eat away at the massifal of the leaf. In popular culture, the town of Bull, Spain, annually celebrates La Tomatina, a festival centered on an enormous tomato fight. On 30 August 2007, 40,000 Spaniards gathered to throw 115,254,000 pounds of tomatoes at each other in the festival. Several US states have adopted the tomato as a state fruit or vegetable see above. Tomatoes have been designated the state vegetable of New Jersey. Arkansas took both sides by declaring the South Arkansas vine ripe pink tomato both the state fruit and the state vegetable in the same law, citing both its culinary and botanical classifications. In 2009, the state of Ohio passed a law making the tomato the state's official fruit. Tomato juice has been the official beverage of Ohio since 1965. Alexander W. Livingston of Reinaldburg Ohio, played a large part in popularizing the tomato in the late 19th century. His efforts are commemorated in Reinaldburg with an annual tomato festival. Flav Saver was the first commercially grown genetically engineered food license for human consumption. Tomatoes are a popular non-lethal throwing weapon in mass protests, and there was a common tradition of throwing rotten tomatoes at bad performers on a stage during the 19th century. Today this is usually referenced as a metaphor. Embracing it for this protest connotation, the Dutch Socialist Party adopted the tomato as their logo. The U.S. city of Reinaldburg, Ohio calls itself the birthplace of the tomato, claiming the first commercial variety of tomato was bred there in the 19th century Rotten Tomatoes is an American review aggregation website for film and television. The name Rotten Tomatoes derives from the practice of audiences throwing Rotten Tomatoes when disapproving of a poor stage performance. Rotten Tomatoes took the tomato metaphor further by rating films as certified fresh if they got a score of 75% or higher. 
fresh for films with a score of 60% or higher that do not meet the requirements for the certified fresh seal and rotten for films with a score of percent. Further reading. David Gentilcore. Pomodoro. A History of the Tomato in Italy, Columbia University Press, 2010, Scholarly History. Tiemann D. Bless P. McIntyre, L. M. Blandin Abida, Abbeis D. Odubossi, Izzy Rodriguez, G. Ab van der Knoll, E. Taylor, M. G. Kulet, C. Negri, N. H. Snyder, D. J. Kolkan, T. Moskowitz, H. Clark, D. G. Sims, C. Bartoshek, L. Klee, H. J. 5 June 2012. The Chemical Interactions Underlying Tomato Flavor Preferences. Current Biology. 2211. Targib. PMID 22,633,806. Thank you for watching our video on tomato brought to you by Dukurific. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye for now.